worship and praise. Amen. There's a couple of reasons for that. Jesus said that he would inherit the praises of his people. And above everything else, we want Jesus to be in the midst of us. The second part of that is what I just mentioned. That if we will lift him up, then he will draw people under him. They get people that come to the house of the Lord with ease. And they can be ministered to if the presence of the Lord is here. So we need to create an atmosphere that Jesus wants to dwell among us this morning. And the way we do that is by magnifying him.
slows down the service, which it does. This is the purpose of the church, yes. is yeah. to minister to people and That's to right. give them opportunities Amen. to tell God what they need. Right. Amen. So we're not just doing this as a ritual this morning, right. Amen. but it's something that we want you to be able to share the things that are in your life, Amen. so that we can all pray yeah. together, yes. Amen. because we're all part of the family of God. We need yeah. each other. Amen. There's no need in us acting like that we've all got it together because we don't. Because there's needs in each of our lives. There's things that we struggle with. We have strengths and we have weaknesses. And that's why we need one another. Yes, Amen. But above all, we need God. We can't do yes. this on our own. None of us can. Amen. We need Jesus. Amen. I'm so thankful that we can turn to Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're just going to pray for a minute. Just take your time. Amen. Talk to God about what's going on. Amen. If you remember these, that some of these folks have called names. Amen. Mention them to the Lord. We want God to move in every situation and to make a difference because only He can do that. So let's talk to God for a minute. Jesus, my Lord, we love you. We're so thankful, Lord, that we can turn to you, Jesus. My Lord, when we have needs, when we have questions, God, we don't know the answer, Lord. God, we need your direction today, Jesus. We need your help, God. My Lord, it's not that for us, Jesus. We just make a mess of things. God, but we want you to direct our path, Lord. Order our steps, Jesus. Throw us close to you, God. Lord, we're thankful for your mercy, God. My Lord, we're Jesus. You can move in every situation this morning. Been mentioned, God, every name has been called. You're able to heal Jesus. You're able to save God. You can deliver Jesus from any addiction. Lord, just the mention of your name, the devil's have to believe. Now, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would move in this house, God. Minister, Lord, to them in the name of Jesus. Give us strength, God. Give us protection for that you are.
We're here to love you and help you find deliverance that the Lord has for you. We all have things we still need deliverance for. But I just want to know one thing. I have a question for you. Are you ready for the Lord to come back today? Amen. Are you just thinking, oh, maybe 10, 15 years from now? Uh, but I always say, you know, the Lord may not come back to the church today, but He could certainly come for me at any moment. So that's what we have to be prepared for, is that any moment thing. When I go to sleep at night, I don't know if I'm going to wake it up. When I get up, I don't know if I'll ever go to sleep again in this life. So we have to be ready and look for it. And I'll tell you what it takes to live for God. It takes commitment. It takes to surrender your whole self to Him. Lord, take me. Make me what you want me to be. Help me, Lord. I don't want anything but you. If it means giving up my family, if it means giving up everything I've got, All right. on my very life, Lord, what I want is you. Because if we count the Lord, we got it all. Yes. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited this morning. So yes. glad to see all of you here, and especially you young people back there. You yes. little children. Yes. I love kids. I want to see them in church. I want to see them fill the Holy Ghost. Look, you don't have to be old enough to get the Holy Ghost. You can have the Holy Ghost just like I got it when I was 20 years old. You can have it right today. And it will keep you all through your life and help you not to make your terrible mistakes. It will keep you and help you walk from God so you can live for Him. I love it so much. This is so, I'm so excited because I just shared with all y'all at once that I actually got my voice recorded this week. First time ever. I mean, it's been recorded on tapes and stuff, but I always said, don't let me hear that joke. I will never see it again if I hear I say it on that. But my grandson, he's a musician, and he has all this recording equipment. So right in my home, he comes in and he, my son's there to play the piano and they do the soundtrack. Um, the only trouble was they only did one song. I mean, I was ready to do a whole album of songs, but he didn't. <laughs> I read it go with this, get out there and get it all done. I said, well, Mason, I think I was going to be alive until next year. <laughs> of I'm planning on that. But anyhow, I just am so excited. But this is a song we recorded. And it's an old song. And uh, Vesco Goodman used to sing it. I'm going to go. It's the old record or whatever. But it's been my, one of my theme songs. And I know it sure is just any day now. Our Lord to come. We need to be ready. Will He find us watching? Will He find us waiting? Will He find us helping somebody else? Doing what He wants us to do as me. Each time I stop and take the time to look around me.
um, help them to raise money or give them an offering to help. So when we get, take our offering today, I want you to remember that over the next couple of weeks that you might want to give a little bit extra. Just we want to get ahead of it so we're not caught off guard and then we don't know the exact amount right now. So we know that here in just the next few weeks we're going to have that closing and we want to be ready for that. And there God will bless you in your giving. Also remember our missionary. I know that Brother Rick has talked about that, that any extra that you can put in will go toward supporting our missionary every month. If you're unable to give monetarily, remember to pray for the missionary and family. Amen. We join in partnership with them. And what that means is that we're going to support them through money and through prayer. And whatever happens in Vietnam under their ministry, we're a part of that. Amen. And that's exciting to know that we're impacting more than this area. Amen. But there's people on the other side of the world that we're helping to spread the gospel to as well. Christian, would you come? We're going to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Amen. Remember those things that we talked about. God will bless you in your giving. Let's pray today. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for an opportunity to give to the work of the Lord Jesus. We pray, God, for the blessings in our own lives. We pray that you would bless this today, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you this morning. As you when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more.
Amen. There's just such a peace and a joy in living for the Lord. It doesn't matter what comes. Amen. What you have to go through. Amen. There is a comfort in walking with Jesus. Amen. There's also instructions that come from this pulpit. The preaching of the Word of God. Amen. Aren't you thankful for our pastor? Amen. God has given us a pastor to give us direction. Amen. Don't be surprised. Amen. That it, our pastor begins to preach from the Word of the Lord. And it touches exactly where you're living. Amen. And what you need. Amen. It's not that he knows, but he's been in contact with a God that does know. Yes. Amen. And God uses preaching to touch and minister. Amen. Yes. Yes. So what I want us to do one more time, I want us to pray that we would open our hearts and our ears and understanding to receive the word of the Lord this morning. Yes. Jesus, we thank you for your presence. God, you are your word again. Jesus, we felt your touch. We know, Lord, that you come to minister, God. We pray now, Lord, that you would anoint the leaves and the preach in our hearing what you lay on this heart, God. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that those that are under the sound of my voice would respond to that, Jesus. That we would open our door when you knock on our heart's door. My Lord, give us ears to hear, Jesus, and wisdom to understand today. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Let's continue to do that. Worship the Almighty God. We love the Lord this morning. We bless your name. We thank you, Jesus. The love of God that's in this house. We take your Bibles and turn with me this morning. Hallelujah. To the book of Matthew, chapter number 24. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to have visitors with us this morning. We're so glad you're here. We want you to make yourselves at home. Worship the Lord with us. Receive what the Lord has for you this morning. The rains, and I can guarantee you this, it's always something that is good. Amen. Amen. Matthew Praise chapter Lord. number 24. And I'm really going to read one verse of scripture, verse number 14. If I can get on the right page. <laughs> Probably familiar with Matthew chapter number 24. Of all the things it talks about and says about the coming of the Lord. But it's just this one verse of scripture. Verse number 14 in the Bible says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It's just the first part of that verse that I want to focus on. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, it shall. I'm going to stop right there and preach it for a little while this morning. A time to preach. Praise, Praise the Lord. Let's put our Bibles down to the Lord one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, Jesus. <laughs> We understand, God, that in this word there is the power to save our souls. The power is in this word to break every addiction, every yoke. My Lord, there is blood that is talked about in the word of the Lord that covers all sin stains, all sins, all iniquities. Praise God. You are able, Lord, to make all things new. We give you praise this morning. We magnify your name, Lord. We rejoice in you this morning. We are excited to stand in the presence of the Lord, understanding that God is not a respecter of persons. He loves some of us more than he loves others. He loves us all the same. We are his creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sheep of his pastor. Yes. It is he that has created us. Not we ourselves. We don't belong to the devil. Hallelujah. It's not his will that any of us are lost. Or any of us should perish. But all that would come to repentance. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you. 
The Bible says that there is a time. Matter of fact, it's in that 24th chapter of, the, of Matthew that the stars will fall from their place. The Bible says that there is a time in that same 24th chapter of the book of Matthew when the sun and the moon will refuse to give its light. There is a time that is explained in that same chapter when the fig tree will begin to put forth her leaves. Yes. The Bible talks about a time of tribulation, yes. a time of problems and violence and hatred like the world has never seen at any time, at any point before this. <coughs> the Bible talks about a time when it seems that false prophets own the day. Yes. And many shall be offended. Right. Praise God. Yes. We live in a society that is offended by it seems like just about everything. Yes. The Bible talks about a time when there will be great pestilence in the earth. Pestilence. Pestilence is diseases of mankind. Pestilence that would and is powerful enough that it will disrupt the ordinary lives of individuals worldwide. A time when iniquity will abound and the love of many shall wax cold. But I want to tell you something, folks. When the stars fall from their place, yes. when the sun and moon no longer shine, right. when the fig tree puts forth its leaves, when tribulation comes and false prophets own the day, when we are offended, when pestilence is present with us, when iniquity abounds, yes. When the love of many wax cold, when Gabriel sets the trumpet to his mouth, when the voice of the archangel reverberates through the atmosphere, when the dead rise from their resting place, and when Jesus shall appear with 10,000 of his angels, this gospel of the Last 
preaching gospel. And there is only one. Praise God. Yes, amen. That is everlasting. There are philosophies. There are religions. There are doctrines. There are many. There are beliefs. There are things that people religiously ascribe to. But there exists in heaven and in earth only one everlasting gospel that will change your life. That will save your soul. That will break your addictions. That will give you talk. That will give you peace. That will put your family back together. It calls husbands to love their wives. Wives to love their husbands. Children respect. Mom and dad. Joy that you never thought you could ever have. Praise the Lord. It's found in one source. In one source only. The everlasting gospel. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Peter preached in Acts chapter number two. He began his preaching because of an unusual happening. There were about 120 people that came stumbling down a stairway to drunk on the Spirit of God. To walk like they normally would. Speaking languages. You can read it for yourself. Speaking languages. That they did not know. Yes. Had not been taught. Yes. But there were people that gathered there together that day. That knew what they were saying. Yes, amen. When they accused him of being drunk. Intoxicated. Peter never denied the fact. That they were intoxicated all right. He just said they're not drunk like you think they are. They're not drunk like you suppose. And then he begins to quote the scripture. In the second chapter of the book of Joel. He says, but this is that. That was prophesied. By the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God. In the last days, saith God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
for there is no other everlasting gospel yes. save one. Yes. And it's the one that Peter preached. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. On that day of Pentecost. Yes. That's right. Philip, in Acts chapter number 8, Acts chapter number 8, the evangelist Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And when he got to Samaria, he found a city that was full of the devil. He found a people that were controlled by a sorcerer by the name of Simon. He found people there that were possessed of the devil. The devil had control of them and their will was gone because the devil dictated what they were to do and they could not break through free. He found that. He found sicknesses, lamenesses, uh, problems that were brought on by the sinful conditions that these people live in. Philip preached the exact same message. Yeah. Philip preached Christ to them. And the Bible says that it had the exact same results. For yeah. devils were cast out. The lame walked. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. They were the sick. The palsies were healed. They were baptized in Jesus' name. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Their addictions were broken. Their lives were put back together. The chains fell off. They were not bound by the devil anymore. They were now free to live for God. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is the same message got the exact same results. I have read this in some pretty prestigious magazines. And I have heard, I've heard this statement made by a lot of people. And I absolutely, totally agree with it. Have you ever heard anybody say, well, you can't do the same thing and expect different results? Have you ever heard that? Why, yeah, that's usually if you're talking about church growth or something. And uh, Anyway, you hear the statement made, you can't continue to do the same thing and expect something different. Yes. All right. I totally agree with that. Yes. Amen. I absolutely agree with that. That you can't do the same thing and expect that somehow it's going to come out differently. But you see, the point is, we don't want it to come out differently. We want it the same. If the lame are walking again, because of some message that somebody is preaching, if the blind are getting their sight back, right. both spiritually and physically, because of a message that somebody is preaching, if those, those people that are hurting are being comforted yes. by a Savior that is introduced to them by means of somebody Preaching a message, if the lost are getting saved and the prodigals are coming home and the empty are being filled and the doubters are finding faith and the sin are being cleansed and the wicked are being changed, why in the world would you want to change it? It doesn't matter what's going on in this world. It does not matter. It doesn't matter that the world's gone crazy. It does not matter. Yes. This gospel of the kingdom 
is still Thank being you, preached. Yes. Honey, and it still has the same results. Yes, amen. Yes. Our ears long to hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Yes. People begin to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Yes. Yes. Our eyes long to see and witness the troubling of the water as souls are being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. Hallelujah. We're not going to do something different to because when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, it always produces the same results. Why in the world would we want to trade the philosophies, philosophies of man for the power of God? Why in the world would we want to do that? Why would we want to trade the, the iffiness of ideas of not knowing whether this is actually going to work or not. Why would we want to trade that for a sure thing? Right. Hallelujah. Amen. No, let me stop right there. Hallelujah. So you struggle with that a little bit. Let me tell you something. Just raise your hand right now. Everybody, just raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. And give glory to God. Whatever condition you're in, whatever shape you're in, you are yet His creation. Just raise your hand and thank God that you can feel His presence this morning. And I promise you, you will begin to feel that presence of the Lord in a greater manner. Talk to Him just a minute. Call on His name. Take Him by His hand, as it were. That's the hymn of his garment. Feel the male stars in his hands. Let your heart burn within you. Understand that you are in the presence of God. Hallelujah! It works. It just works. Hallelujah. And it is not the only thing that works. Praise God. I've known people. I've known people that went against the laws of deity. I've known people that went against the laws of God and nature. And I have lived long enough to see where those people ended up. And I'm not going to go that route. Hallelujah. Pardon me. I'm not going that way. Praise God. I'm going to stick with this gospel. As for me and my house. Praise God. And we're going to serve God. We're going to live for Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then there's a lot of crazy stuff. There is a lot of crazy stuff. This woke crowd that is supposed to be so highly intellectual, the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they have become fools. To the point that, that they now question what a woman is. It's a big question among the woke crowd now is what is a woman? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I got a little boy on my school bus. His name is Elian Ninchi. Elian is three years old. He will turn four years old this summer. And I will probably see him in September. Hallelujah. If you want to know what a woman is, ask little four-year-old Elian Ninchi, and he can tell you what a woman is. He'll be able to point one or two out. Yeah, there's one of them right there. That's a woman. Praise God. He don't call his mother his birthing parent. He calls her mom. Right. I heard it. Praise God. Yeah. And when he called her mama, she didn't get mad. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But in the midst of all of this craziness that's going on in this world, oh, be a good cheer. It is the Father's good pleasure. To give to you the kingdom. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Be a good seed. Did you know the Bible says it's for whosoever will? Yes. That it's not just for a special group that just happened to be born in the right generation.
generation of the rat society or had the right name whose mom and daddy just happened to go to the right church. It didn't say that. It said that whosoever will. Let him come. And let him take the waters of life freely. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody is going to be preaching this gospel of the kingdom. Peter started it. But it has not stopped. Somebody is yet preaching it. Some pastor somewhere is preaching this gospel of the kingdom. Some pastor that's more focused on folks getting saved and ready to go to heaven than what he is numbers to put on a Sunday school world. That kind of pastor. Some evangelist is preaching this gospel of the kingdom right now, this morning. It's being preached and somewhere on this earth, yeah. somebody's been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right. And somebody is being healed. Somebody has had a prognosis from the doctor that read them their best sentence. But I promise you, somewhere on this earth, they are in an altar this morning and they're being healed yeah. this moment that we sit here. Thank God. Because some evangelist is more interested than preaching the name of Jesus. Some Sunday school teacher. Yes. She's got her little the little chairs, you know, those little short chairs for little kids. Hallelujah. Yes, I, I think we got some of them somewhere. Yes, yeah. She's sitting in a little bigger chair. And she she's got her little kids sitting around all around her. And she is talking to them about what I'm talking to you. The gospel of the kingdom. Yes. Right. She's not in that class because nobody else would do it. She is not there. The baby sit for 45 minutes or an hour while the main service is going on in the auditorium. Now that ain't how it is. This is her little congregation right here. On Sunday morning, she becomes the pastor. And she's got them sitting right here. And she's teaching them and preaching to them the effect that this gospel of the kingdom and the lives of those kids are being changed. Because of the love of God. Hallelujah. And we said, part of my friendship that a whole lot of times kids are much more sensitive to the move of the voice of God than what grown ups are. Absolutely, if you go that far. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some saint of God is going to share this gospel with somebody that they work with. And this gospel of the kingdom is going to bring the same results, it's going to have the same effect. Praise God. I, I want to tell you something, Brother Randy. I have learned from preaching, by a lot of years of preaching, that when you got sick folks in your church, when you got people hurting in your church, physically hurting in your church, you know, in your in, in your uh, in circle of friends, you know, you know people that 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 desperately need to be healed, Amen. that want to be healed. I have found out when, when in your circle of friends and in your church, when you got a lot of sick folks, it's time to preach healing. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That is the time to preach the healing power of God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about doing it? He don't heal them. Then it's, just, it's, it's up to God and up to me. It's just up to me to preach what is in the book. And from both testaments, you can find it. Isaiah 53, James chapter number 5. In both, both testaments, uh, the Bible talks about, also in the book of Mark, that he is a healer. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Yes. That the people that still buy into this, this gospel of the kingdom, shall lay hands on the sick and shall, shall see them recover. There is a promise uh, that the prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise them up. And if they have committed any sin, those sins will be forgiven. It is with his stripes, Isaiah said, that we are healed. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. And when there is sick among us, there are sick people that may be not in this congregation, congregation, but people we know, it's time to stand and preach that God is a healer. Right. Yes. When the cover gets a little bit bare, the way they say it in eastern Arkansas, the gravy gets a little bit thin. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible didn't 
say it this way, but when gas goes to six dollars a gallon, and inflation skyrockets to the point that we wonder what in the world we're going to be doing next year. Well, cheer up a little bit because among this, the things that are listed among this gospel of the kingdom, that the Lord, even Jesus, will supply all your needs.
The Bible says he's not far from any one of us. He gets close. Hallelujah. Yes. And you can feel his presence. Hallelujah. Close enough that you can touch him. Yes. Save yourselves. If you ever thought you had nothing to do with your salvation, you thought wrong. You've got everything to do with it. But just a little of effort in it. Hallelujah. I was, I was reading just a couple of nights ago. I was reading about some of the, the, the most venomous snakes, the most dangerous snakes that, uh, that exist. And I always wanted to go to Australia, but I think it's about changing my mind. <laughs> because it seems like that most of them live there. There is one in particular that's called Black Mamba. And it's said that they are, I, I don't know if it's, it's the most venomous, but it is among the top three or four. That if you are bitten by a black mamba, that if you don't have access to an antivenin, and if you're not injected with that antivenin, you're going to die. There's no question about it. That snake will kill you. It said that they possess enough poison to kill 10 people. And if you are bitten by one, and unless you can get antivenin, and have it injected into your body, you're going to die. Yes. People don't have a problem, it seems, understanding that. Most people don't. And if they got bit by one of these dangerous snakes, just knowing, and thank the Lord there is an antivenin that does exist, but just knowing that that antivenin exists is not going to save you. Right. It won't. And it's not hard to explain that to people. You get bit by that snake, you're going to die unless you get that enemy. Now, if you get that, you live, but you've got to have it. It's not hard to explain to people that, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about it because uh, I know that there is an enemy in it. I know it exists, so it'll be all right. That don't make any sense. And somebody bit by a black mom, but I mean, one of them, I ain't buying that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't know why sometimes the people don't understand that just knowing that there is a God that exists, just knowing that there is, there is an antidote for your sin, there is an antivenin for your sin. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says, not the pastor. The Bible says that he that sinneth shall surely die. Right. If sin is going to kill you. Yes, amen. But guess what? There's an end of it. Amen. Yes. But just know that it exists. Well, I'm going to be all right, Brother Randy. I'm going to be okay because I know there's a God. I, I believe there's a God. I'm, I'm okay. Oh, no. No. Peter said, save yourselves from this unborn generation. You've got to do more than just know he exists. You have got to get injected with this thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, Peter, when he laid this foundation, he said, if you repent and got baptized, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it gets inside of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I can tell you this morning from experience, because I've been on both sides of the fence, it will change your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I've heard people say that really had got into some situations in their life and had looked for something that would give them a, a little excitement and, and, and they looked at all the wrong places and got more involved in all the wrong things. Yeah. I have heard people say before, I never thought that I would be what I have become. I never thought I'd be like this. I want to tell you.
you something this morning. Jesus is giving you the opportunity yes. to go in the other direction yes. and become something in the kingdom of God that you never thought you could be. Amen. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Let us worship Him. Let's praise Him right now before we do anything else. Let's just look at Him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Yes, He is.
that's coming to the spirit of the Lord. That's coming to hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. And let's pray. Let's talk to God. There are souls in the mouth. My Lord, let's talk to him. Let's reach out to him. Would you give to somebody and let's pray for just a minute? They won't mind. It will be all right. Praise God. Well, let the spirit of boldness and also be very sensitive and give to somebody right here and let's pray one for another. Hallelujah. My Lord, pray. Pray that their questions are answered. Pray that their bodies are healed. Pray that the souls are cleansed. Pray, my Lord, that the cleanse, their hearts are cleansed, my Lord. Pray that the blood is supplied. Pray, my Lord, that they are filled with the Spirit. Let's pray.
last few weeks, the last week or so, we kind of have been having special prayers, kind of focused on prayer. And uh, we're praying every night, not just Sunday night, we're praying every night. Um, and the church is going to be praying for your family tonight. I don't think God can handle this unless he can handle it. 